Okay, good morning, everybody. A very warm welcome. How are you doing? Do feel free to say hello in the chat box so that I know that you're receiving me. Uh, my name is Michael Brandon. I'll be presenting a session. I'm going to be talking about uh, teaching young learners online. Okay, I'm getting some hellos in there. Perhaps in the chat box, you could say where you're from. Um, I can see Georgia and Latvia already, Poland as well, already a nice mix of countries. Uh, hello there, Tetiana from Ukraine. I'm going to write, just writing down a couple of your names because I need them in a second uh, for a little activity. Okay. I won't be able to write down everybody's name, but I'll be able to write down a few. Hello from Poland. Hello from Croatia. Uh, good. Hello from Minsk. Uh, Okay, I've got down, I need to get down, I think eight names will be enough. Okay, lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, so you're very welcome in this session. My name is Michael Brands and I'm a teacher trainer for Pearson. Um, also a teacher, I teach online. I'm part of the live classes, the Pearson and BBC live classes project, which you may have heard about, teaching young learners from, from all around the world simultaneously in online classes. So um, it's in my capacity as, um, as an online teacher that I'm going to be delivering this session on online teaching for young learners, okay? Good. Just a quick, um, quick housekeeping point. Um, you're already doing this, almost all of you, I think. In the chat box, please send your messages to everyone, um, all panelists and attendees. That means that you can all read what you will write. If you only send your messages to panelists, then, uh, or all hosts and panelists, then only, only I and my colleagues can read what you write. And it would be nice for everybody to see what, what, what you're writing. Okay, I won't be able to, to read all the messages in the chat box, but I will be using it in the session because there are times when I ask you some questions and I, I will try to interact with you. Okay, good. So let's begin. Uh, you're very welcome to this session on teaching young, young learners uh, online, okay? And I'd like to give you an extra special welcome by singing you a little song, if that's okay. So I've got my, got my trusty guitar with me. Just like at the start of a class, we're gonna, we're gonna sing a song, okay? So if you, if you get the rhythm, you can try and sing along with me, okay? Here we go. So I'm just gonna, oh, lovely, somebody said. Well, you haven't heard the song yet, so hopefully, hopefully it'll go, it'll go okay. Here we go. <clears throat> Hello everybody, hello everyone, welcome to the English class, welcome girls and boys, welcome to the English class, welcome boys and girls, we're gonna speak, we're gonna sing, we're gonna play and we're going to learn, we're gonna have a great time in our English class. We're gonna have a great time. Where? In our English class. Hello, Yagoda. Hello, Tetiana. Hello, Olga. Hello, Kinga. Hello, Ekaterine. Hello, Camila. Hello, Miroslava. Hello, Vita. There we go. So I, I, there's 200 of you in here or more, so I can't say hello to all 200 people because you'd be listening to that. <laughs> you'd be listening for the next hour. OK, but I said hello to about eight of you. Um, and in a class, you know, I wouldn't have two, 200 students, so I could say hello to everybody. We'll talk and we'll talk. We'll go back to the song in a second um, about a why. Why am I singing your song? Uh, good. So. Um, so just in the chat box, if, if you, and don't forget online teaching now, but just general teaching. And on, and on a young learners class, let's say students from six to 12, if you walked into a, a successful online, uh, a successful young learners class, what sort of things might you expect to see? Um, what ingredients would you put in your recipe for a successful young learners class? Just, just throw a few ideas in the chat box. I'd be very grateful. What makes a uh, songs, games, and smiles? Yeah, <laughs> right. smiles are important. Silence, yeah, they're right. The silence is important at times too. Um, 
a bit of a mix. Games in English equals a fun lesson. Yeah, lots of stuff on games. Movement, you expect it to be moving. Positive greetings. Okay, well, hopefully we've done the positive greeting today. A nice mood in the class. I'm going to try to recreate that in this, in this session. TPR, okay, we've got a bit of that in there as well. Lots of fun, curiosity, games and smiling. Okay, okay, lovely. Thank you for, um, routine means games in specific time. Lovely, uh, we do need a bit of routine. In fact, um, I'm gonna just move on to some of my ideas. Um, well, sort of tried and tested ideas. It's not like I, I didn't come up with them, but routine is something is the first on my list. So feeling of fit, security and predictability are particularly important in uncertain times, I think. Um, the, the last 18 months have been quite stressful for all of us and including our students. Um, for young learners, we need lots of input to aid, to aid production. So they might not start speaking immediately and we shouldn't be surprised. They do need lots, lots to work with, lots of input. Um, lots of modeling activities, uh, perhaps teacher modeling, then a the teacher with a the pupil, then finally the pupil's doing it. So being explicitly shown to do is really, really worthwhile with, with young learners wherever possible. Many of you said games and movement. Um, young learners still like to play. They still like symbolic play. And some of them find it hard to sit still as well. And they're generally happy to sing and act. You were happy to sing today. I hope, hope, hope you, were, you were really happy to sing. Um, and role plays bring a bit of theatre, a bit of drama, dressing up you might expect to see in the young learners classroom. So we said that, that some young learners don't have the longest of it, attention spans, um, whereas you might have a teen class focusing on a text for half an hour, you probably wouldn't do that with your young learners, you might change activities more frequently, okay? Praise is important, young learners enjoy the, the approval of adults, but we do want specific praise, uh, praise focused on the, the, the learning objectives and the task in hand, is really effective so the learners know what they're being praised for rather than uh, you know, a stream of, of, of very goods. And finally, um, they're limited in what they can read and write. So certainly in the early years of primary, you might not see prolonged reading and writing exercises. This isn't a definitive list, of course. We could talk about developing values in our pupils. We could talk about developing useful global skills, but it's what we're going to bear in mind today, okay? On to my, my next slide, we're now bringing in this idea of online teaching or the challenges of online teaching. Uh, it throws up, it has thrown up a number of challenges. I've tried to, I've put sort of seven, I, seven possible challenges in the, in, on the screen here because there's more distance, uh, just like today with you and I. Um, we, we ask ourselves these questions, are, are they listening to me? Uh, do they understand my instructions and what the task? Uh, how, are, they, are they getting this? Are they, are they understanding what I've taught them? How can I keep them active for the, for the whole lesson? How can I keep them engaged? Can they handle the tech? Uh, do they know what they're supposed to be pressing and turning on and off? Can I handle the tech? Uh, many of us have, have, have had to learn a lot over the last year. And also a good, a good young learners class has a real sense of belonging and togetherness and it's a team and everybody feels comfortable and at home and welcome. Can we recreate that in, you know, in an online sphere when everybody's sat in, sat in their houses, okay? So those are some challenges, I think, which just pop in the chat box, which would be, which is the biggest challenge for you? Checking, writing, somebody else has said, and we talk, we're gonna talk about writing a little bit. Which, is the, which do you think is the biggest challenge here? You can just pop a number in the in the chat box and I'll try and spot a trend. I can see a four, keeping them active, keeping them focused. Threes and fours, do they understand me? Yeah, are they listening to me? Still threes and fours are most, making them talk. Seven, uh, somebody said as well, four, seven, four. Yeah, uh, five, I mean, it's a smattering. They're all, I think they're all valid challenges, aren't they? Probably looking at your responses, I've seen more fours than, 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 than of the other numbers. Okay, but they're all getting a mention. So, good. Um, though I'm going to be bearing in mind, if you like, that recipe and those challenges as I move through the session and talk about the activities, okay? So, uh, first of all, the, the Welcome to the English Class song. Uh, this, I adapted this song from... I used to take my, my little boy to music for babies in Spain. And the, the teacher who was wonderful used to sing a welcome song. It was, 
Hola, bienvenidos, bienvenidas a la música. So it's welcome to the music. And so I sort of adapted that, if you like, which is welcome to the English class. So I didn't write the, the chords. Um, but anyway, the song, it can be any welcome song. Um, and the idea of the song as well is it sets the mood. It, 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 it um, helps with a sense of belonging. And also, if you're mentioning the, the students' names and you're, you're saying hello to them one at a time and they're saying hello back to you because they can have their mics on, it does feel that they're, you know, they really are welcome into the class. You've, you've said their name. So that's why I tried to, cop to write down eight of your names at the start and say hello to you personally. Would have loved to have done it with all of you. OK, you've got the chords at the bottom if you want to, to have a go at, at playing the song. And I'm sure you can get the slides, the presentation. OK, um, moving on. So I want to just talk about technology functions, uh, first of all. Um, so the tech side of things, both for teachers and students, are found as a question of practice. We, I'm sure we're all more technically capable than we were 18 months ago. Um, for me, modeling has been really useful. So you know, I'm sharing screen now. If I want my students to write something on a Padlet, I will share my screen and go to the Padlet and write something first so they can see exactly what I'm doing. So wherever possible, showing them exactly what to do rather than giving instructions um, is, is useful. Okay, so uh, these are probably the main four features uh, of a video conferencing platform. Um, we can see one another with a camera. Um, we can speak with a microphone. We can share our computer screens and write in the chat box. Today it's just the last one because this is a webinar tool, but you wouldn't be teaching from a webinar tool, you'd be teaching from a more of a meeting tool. So you'd have the other, the other features. Okay, so I just want to talk about these features. First of all, screen share. Um, being able to share your screen is very useful. Uh, it's been around in teacher training webinars since well before the pandemic. We people have been sharing PowerPoints online. What online, what might you share when you're sharing your screen? Well, you might share your presentation tool. So the sort of the digital book, if you like. Um, so to, to continue with your, with your course. Uh, so this is what you'd normally use as interactive whiteboard software in your classroom. Um, they normally have interactive features and later on we'll look at using this tool. You might also share a whiteboard, um, just like you would in a face-to-face -face class. Um, a Zoom whiteboard can be used collaboratively, which means the students can write on it. And again, we're going to look at examples of that. Um, you might share a PowerPoint, as I'm doing today. For example, the one down there where I, the lesson I, I shared the lesson objectives on a, on a PowerPoint slide. You might also share any website that you're going to go to. OK, so there's, there's lots of scope for sharing screen. With, with a word of warning, if you like, and something that I sort of had to learn pretty quickly, I think. So when I started online lessons, I used screen sharing too much. Today in this webinar, I'm doing all lots and lots of screen sharing, but in a, in a lesson, I wouldn't be doing so much. You know, I was getting, I was asking students a question and I would have the question on a PowerPoint slide and I'd be sharing the PowerPoint slide with a question on and I'd have to be able to see five students in a little window down the right. And I'd be asking them the question, with the question on most of the screen and the students on a tiny bit, but they didn't need the question on the screen really once I'd asked it once. So I should have stopped sharing and, um, you know, they, they'd be, we'd be, I'll be able to see them. If I stop sharing now, uh, you can probably see me, you can probably see me, uh, you know, a, a lot bigger. And if you were here too, you, I'd be able to see you as well. Um, and then we can, you know, we can gauge each other's reactions, our smiles, and this idea of belonging. So screen share is really useful um, for many things, but you have to ask yourself your quest the question, do the students need to see what's on the screen right now? If not, off, let's see each other. We can, you know, we can talk about what's in each other's houses and backgrounds, and like I say, see each other's faces, and it's a lot more human. Um, there are a few shortcuts which are very useful when screen sharing. Uh, I've found, Alt, Shift, and S in Zoom is a quick screen share. And if you've got lots of programs open on your computer, Alt and Tab, you should probably see now that I'm flicking between the different programs on my computer that I've got open. If I might prepare my lesson and, um, and move to the program I need at that point, and it's just fast rather than finding it in the menu bar at the moment. Yeah, I might want to go to the Zoom page. I'm going to go to, the, to Google, but then I'm moving back to my, moving back to my presentation. I'm back. Okay, so those shortcuts I find um, 
useful. Okay, so uh, good. Um, and then that's just in a picture of me and my students and you know it's we can all see each other so it's uh whenever possible that's what we want to be, be doing as well so microphone and uh camera uh, students interacting so with microphone we can call on a student to speak we can we can nominate them to speak or we can get the students to nominate each other to speak so different ways of doing this i've used a ball game so if we're imagine we were revising the topic, the topic of vocabulary of toys, which we've been, which I'm going to be looking at in the lesson today. And I, I've got the ball and I have to think of a toy and I say uh, uh, doll and I say Olga catch and Olga whoa, catches the ball. Imagine we can see her now. She dies for it and she says um, uh, train and then she throws the ball and says Kinga and Kinga says, oh, teddy bear and then Kinga says uh, Camilla and Camilla catches and says uh, puzzle and then so the students are throwing the ball to whoever they want so they're nominating who is going to speak next so it doesn't always have to be the teacher saying right now you now you now you and those sorts of activities are good as well for you know I went to the beach and I took with me a towel I went to the beach and I took with me a towel and sun cream I went to the beach etc making lists, uh, revising, giving coming up with ideas, any sorts of brainstorms like that. Okay, uh, good. Yeah, so there are lots of ways to answer, um, well, but sorry, just before we move on to that, I didn't mention the name shout. Sometimes if you ask a question, um, you know, you, you don't really want students all shouting at the same time in a face-to-face -face class. And in an online class, it's even less clear. So you can say, well, you if you ask an open question and, and you say, anyone can can answer you ask them to say their name first so who know who can think of three toys and then they say their name and i hear olga kinga and i say oh i think olga was first there olga which three toys can you think of and and she says uh, plane doll and train so it's not just everyone shouting out plane doll train teddy bear it, you know you've got your name and then i've said yes yeah, your turn to speak and then and, and you speak so you can get them to to shout out their name and then shout, then say the answer. Okay. Okay. Moving on. There are lots of ways uh, to answer yes, no questions in class, or perhaps to show that you've finished. You might set them an activity and then want to know when they've finished, or for them to say if they've understood. Of course, you can test whether they've understood as well. Um, you can get them, imagine we could all see each other. Thumbs up if you finished, or thumbs down. Nod if you finished, or shake your head. And you can name them as well. So I can see Camilla's nodding, very good, Camilla. I can see Vita's nodding, very good. Uh, Julia is shaking. Julia, okay, we've got one more minute. Um, so we can we can name them as much as possible, I think. Um, also, true or false, you know, you might get them to stand up or sit down. So I can see I can see Diana standing up. She thinks it's true. I can. Why do you think it's true, Diana? Julia sitting down. Why do you think it's false? Yeah. Uh, even jumping or crouching so lots of ways of them showing with their bodies yes or no true or false i've finished i've not finished i understand or i don't understand um moving on mime so the camera is cameras lend themselves to miming they can take turns to mime a word or phrase and the others can guess what it is now you know we're doing sports and i mime you know and the person who gets this sport right uh comes along comes along next and and then they start dancing like a ballerina. So miming, we, all of our students can mime. So the camera and the microphone gives us lots of possibilities. And I've just mentioned a few of them here. Um, I just wanna talk about the chat box for a second, which you're using today. Um, so it's the, the chat box then is, very, is, is a very powerful tool. Imagine you're walking around the class and you're looking at your students writing. It, it, it takes quite a long time to go around and see everybody's writing, but in, in the chat box, you can see lots of writing very quickly and you can correct the errors and put them in the chat box as well. Um, but with very young students, I wouldn't use it. And it depends when they learn how to write and then how to type. So my son is six and, and he's he can write quite well now. They do a lot of writing at school, but he can't type yet. So the chat box wouldn't be appropriate for him. I mean, where do people, where do children start learning to type uh, in your context? When would you use, when would you get your young learners to type uh, in the chat box. 
I wonder if there's a consensus here. 10, okay. Eight, seven or eight years old. Eight. Also, of course, it depends on what you're asking them to type. You could be asking them to type a single word or a sentence, and, and that's not, not the same thing. Um, I mean, with quite a lot, well, we've had a six in there as well. So a, quite a fair, a fair spread, people saying I've had six to ten, with eight probably being, yeah, they, it's time consuming, someone says, exactly. So you think, is it, is it the best use of time? Um, you only have a finite mm -hmm. amount, amount of time. Um, so, and when they do use it, I'd give, you give students guidelines on what it's used for. And of course, we can turn it off. So we don't, you know, it's tempting to play in the chat box. You can turn it off when you don't need it and turn it on when you do need it, yeah? Uh, so for older children who can write more, uh, you know, now we're talking sort of 11, 12 year olds, the, the private message function is useful. Uh, I could message you privately here to you individually and I can give you individual feedback. The private message function is also useful for games. So I might say to you all, for example, what's your dream holiday destination? And you will send me it by private message. And then I read some of them out and you, the rest of the students in the class have to guess uh, who they belong to. So Barbados, somebody wants to go to Barbados. Who do we think wants to go there and why? Could be, the question could be anything, but you can use the, 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 the private message function for guessing games, for guessing who said what, okay? Okay, uh, I'll just stop screen sharing for a second. Of course, other, um, other, other whiteboard options, um, other options for writing are, are whiteboards. Um, so you can have like, a, you know, a, an, an actual whiteboard with a, with, with a pen. Uh, there are obviously cheaper ways of doing this uh, with a piece of white paper in a, in a wallet, um, or you can also get students to laminate pieces of white paper, although their, their parents may not necessarily have laminating machines. Uh, teachers often do, okay? Um, so if you are, if you're, if you, this is, if you're getting your students to write on a whiteboard, you can, you can check their, check their understanding. This is checking their spelling. Uh, the students can also learn from each other because they can see what, if the whole class is holding up a whiteboard, they can look what each other, are, see what each other is, is put, put on the whiteboard. Um, this, this is assessment for learning. You know, it's so just seeing what they know and what they need more practice on. Also, if you get everybody to write on a whiteboard, the advantage there is you're not putting any individual on the spot. Um, you, can, you can look through and you can comment on them, but it's not all the focus on one person. You know, I'll say, so, okay, you're good. Yeah, God is uh, feeling happy today. That's great, yeah, God. Why are you feeling happy? Uh, King is feeling a bit sad. What's the matter, Kinga? It's a saying, how you felt or... Okay, so Ekaterina is spelled dinosaur. That's yes, that's dinosaur. Uh, Miroslava, look at your spell. Look at how you've written dinosaur. Is it the same as the others? Can you change something? And you know, rubbing it out so they can, uh, you know, you comment on what they've put and get them to cor correct it if necessary. Um, good. This so this has to be taught like anything else. So you don't want them holding it up at the back. No, no, no. You want it nice big writing and nice and close to the camera showing them exactly what you want yeah um good moving uh moving on to the the next slide just a quick talk about um feedback and encouragement we've already spoken about using the names as much as possible in a class always trying to call them by their name it's another thing that helps them feel sort of a sense of belonging in the lesson trying to get everyone to participate as much as possible and, and making sure that everyone gets mentioned and has a chance to speak. So in my live lessons, in my live classes, this is an example of a little list I've got. I was teaching eight groups of students in a live class, about 20 students in each. And I was ticking off when I got them to do an activity or when I got them to, to um, participate, because I wanted to give everybody you know, a chance to, to take part. And I didn't want anyone forgotten on the sidelines. So that I, find, I found that that helped me, okay? Um, then again, uh, other things to say in, a, in an online class, these things are important for a lesson in general, um, but I think even more with online classes. Facial expressions uh, can be slightly exaggerated, smiles, uh, you, can, you can use your hands to, 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 to stress your points, uh, you know, like as a, as, a, as a list and to mime as well. Um, eye contact, 
So I'm looking at different things here. I've been looking, I've been making notes on your names. I've been, I've got some notes on a tablet over there and I've got my screen, but I've also got the camera. And if I look at the camera, I'm looking at you. So I can say, how are you feeling today? Do, do let me know. And if I look at the camera, I'm looking straight at you. And I'm, so I'm really talking to you rather than, you know, uh, so how are you, how are you doing today? I'm just, I'm saying it while I'm looking down here. So you can look in the camera to look at, look straight at the, you know, your, your students as well. Okay. Uh, good. Feedback signs. I'm just going to stop sharing a little bit here. So I found these, uh, these, you can make signs as another way to give feedback and another way of showing pupils what you mean. Um, and it's a way of giving more specific feedback as well. You can expose them to more language. Um, so I might congratulate them on their writing. Super writing in the chat box there, Olga. Well done, super writing. Or uh, let's see that Camila has read something out. Well read, Camila, very well read. Champion, okay? Or maybe you've all sung the song really nicely sensational singing everybody really sensational or maybe i've done some pronunciation work um because you you can model as well with your mouth uh the shapes of sounds and and try to get them to copy it it's quite that's that's something that's easier you know you can get nice nice and close so i i, br I brushed my teeth brush my teeth today and you know how to shave because i knew i was going to be getting close to the to the camera okay um and then we can do some pronunciation and I can I can congratulate you. You're a pronunciation star. Maybe you've come up with lots of really good ideas, lots of ideas there, quality content. Or maybe I want to give you <laughs> well shaved. Thank you. I'm happy, Svitlana, that you've got the confidence in my abilities. I've had a bit of practice. OK, um, I might want to give you instructions like. It's a speaking activity now. Say your name if you know the answer. <laughs> no makeup. Okay, next time I'll, I'll try harder. Um, micro uh, sorry, microphones on. Okay, you can, you can say your name if you, if you know the answer. Put your microphones on. Or now you need to listen. Microphones off, 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 off. So you're being very explicit. Or maybe on a behavior that I want to praise you on. Maybe you've done good work in a breakout room or, or or completed a shared document or a padlet it's great teamwork I mean, this idea of working together great great teamwork guys or maybe you're feeling a bit i want to encourage you you're not sure about something and i want to encourage you I say come on come on kinga you can oops you can you can do it kinga you can do it you can do it and hopefully the other students will follow and, and encouraging you can do it you can do it so those are my little signs. I made them with um, an app, uh, Bitmoji, the Bitmoji app. Uh, it's just, you, you take a photo of yourself and you come up, you get a, a thousand different emojis of, of yourself, you know? So um, that's how I made, the, made, made them. Um, and then I edited them a little bit, like by writing, writing text on them and printed them and laminated them. So. I mean, it didn't take me too long to do and I've got my little supply and you can obviously put, put on them whatever, whatever's, whatever you want, okay? Right, move on, move on, move on, okay? Right, I wanna talk next about annotation. Um, so, uh, sorry, type the name of the, the app, yeah. Bitmoji, it's a free app. You'll have a lot of fun on it, making a little emoji of yourself and it's, it's good. I've used it for game, gamification, avatars, you know, students can make them. Uh, oh, I just, I'm sorry, I just, I didn't follow my own advice there. I sent the message to hosts and panellists, not really clever. I'm going to send the message to everyone. Bitmoji. Right, I'm going to move on and I'm going to annotate now. So I'm just going to annotate the screen. I'm going to tell you a little story and you're going to tell me what animal it is as soon as you know. So let's have a look. Share screen, share whiteboard. Here we go. So you write in the chat box when you know. Um, there was a little man. There was a little man. He was attacked by a swarm of bees. Bzz, bzz, out, out, out. And he ran all the way to his house. He was very hungry. Mm, very hungry. And not a bear, 
Oh, Alain had a dog. He had two eggs for breakfast in a frying pan and two pieces of bacon. Mm. And yeah, it's it's maybe a dog. And my, my drawing isn't great, even in you know real life, even uh, analog, and it's worse online. But it's okay, goofy. It's maybe a dog. Um, Good. I'm glad you could you could see it was a dog. And I just told a little, you could see a story for, for to, to write the dog there, but you don't have to do that, of course. Um, clear clear all drawings. Okay, I'm going to clear that. Okay. Um, okay. Wow, we've got 380 people in here now. Um, good. I'm going to close my whiteboard. Okay. And I want to, excuse me, share my presentation. That's a bit better. So, uh, I want to talk about annotation then. I've used annotation in different ways. I've divided up the board and assigned students a square and have them do a drawing and the others guess what it is. Because you just, it was just me doing it. You know, the teacher can do it, great. But, but you know, it's even better if the students can do it too. Remember, we're talking about keeping the class uh, active and engaged and the students doing something and it's not just them watching the teacher. So the student can, the students can, can annotate on a whiteboard too. One thing I would draw your attention to is if you look at Miguel, look at Miguel, you can see that there's a little black box that says Miguel in it. So you can, you see the name of who is drawing and that's very useful um, to know who's drawing. I've used this, I've, I've put a picture on the board and say, who can find the plane? And the students have to underline it or circle it. And you can see who's doing it. So you can see who's first and you can say, well, it's a race. Circle the plane, circle the doll, circle the puzzle. So, you know, and they're, they're, they're drawing on, on the board and you can see who's doing, so you can say who is, who's first. You can do little, little races, okay? You can, so in Zoom, you can enable and disable annotation options. Um, so if you don't need it, you can disable it. You, you don't want them graffitiing on the screen. You can just turn it off. But remember, you can also see their names. Uh, I'd leave that function on. So if anyone does use it and they're not supposed to, well, you know who's done it. Okay. But, but as I say, you can, you can turn it off. Um, and you, if we were in a Zoom meeting, you and I had enabled annotation, you would see, you would go to view options and click on annotate. You can't do that now because it's a webinar. But if I disabled it, then the option wouldn't be there. And you can show these things, like if you get your students to annotate, they'll need, they need to learn how to do it. So you can, you can show them how to do it with a screenshot. You could even go one step further and show us in a screencast, in a video. And, you know, first of all, you just get them practicing and scribbling on a white screen and, and typing, uh, but then moving on to actually using it for activities. Okay. Okay. I want to move on and I want to talk about using surroundings in uh, in your online lessons, okay? Okay, so um, let's talk about using our surroundings. Um, so we've often, I mean, we've mentioned of the challenges of teaching online and uh, we talk about the disadvantages, but it, I mean, it does open up possibilities as well and scope for, for innovation and creativity and, and new ideas. And I've, 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 I've got six, six activities here, which uh, very much lend themselves to online lessons. Some of them can be done face-to-face -face as well, but they do lend themselves to online lessons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate some of the activities uh, with you and talk about some of the other ones, okay? So first one says treasure hunt. Um, children do like getting up and bringing something back to show to you. Uh, they enjoy the movement. They enjoy showing people their stuff. And it's a good way of checking they know a word or concept as well. So if you ask them to show me something blue and they show you something yellow, well, they've not understood. If you ask them to show me something made of metal and they show you something made of wood, well, they've not understood metal. So it's a way of checking that they, they know um, you know, my, my little boy loves running around the house and finding things for his, for, his, for his online lessons, okay? Show and tell is similar, but it involves more, more preparation because they know what they're going to, to show and talk about. 
Um, it's something that students can be motivated to do and, and therefore will learn language to be able to do. Uh, this is like showing something that's important to you, something you want to talk about. We can provide a frame. So, you know, language structures. I'm going to talk about um, X. Um, uh, it is important because I use it for, etc. And in fact, we can start, we can do a show, we can show something important to us that so that students have, have seen uh, how it works. And also the students can show things that they might not bring into the classroom. So they might, they could show their bike or their cat or their little sister. Okay, so you can have them talking about something that's, that's important uh, to them. Okay. Okay, uh, organize your toys. I'm gonna to stop sharing and I'm going to, let's see, view speaker. So let's have a look. Um, let's have a look. I'm just going to, okay, I'm just going to pin myself so I can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, uh, you can organize the household objects. So I'm just going to go to the, the, the sofa, if you like, okay? So hopefully, can you, hopefully you can still see me. Hello there. I'm, I can still see the chat box so I can see, you know, I can see if anyone writes anything. Can you see me next to my sofa? Are you, are you receiving me? So it's a sofa bed, actually. Yes. OK, cool. Right. I'm just going to move the whiteboards out of the way. And I've got, imagine, again, we're talking about toys today. So imagine we've been working on dinosaur, doll, and car, and prepositions. So I can get you to either bring your, your own along to the lesson, or if you haven't got one, you can make one uh, or draw one. And we can organize them. And I can tell you how I want them organized and I can check that you're doing it. So put the dinosaur between the doll and the car. Very good. Put the dinosaur on top of the doll. Uh, very good there, Julia. Uh, Ludmilla on top of the doll. That's right. Um, put the car behind the doll. Okay, and you're copying First of all, you're copying what I'm doing, you know, then, then I can get, I can ask you, I can say, well, where is the car? Where is the dinosaur? And then of course you can do it as well. So one of you in your houses can have your three toys and be arranging them and everyone can copy what you're doing. So always is this idea of teacher modeling an activity and then can they hand it over to a student to, uh, to, to have a go as well. And that goes for flashcards, which we're gonna talk about in a little while as well, okay? Um, Good. Moving on to the next thing on the list. I'm just going to screen share just to just to remind us what it is. So what's different? Yeah. OK, so what's different is next. Um, what's different? So, I mean, this can be something obvious. So what's different? You can just you can. Um, you can turn the camera off. So look at I want you to look at everything and, and tell me what's different when I want to turn the camera back on. OK. So what's, what's different? Can anyone see anything different? Has anything changed here? What, what's different, guys? Anyone put it in the chat box? Some, it's not that hard, this one. I mean, they've done, I've started with an easy one for you. Yeah, OK. Glasses and a cap, OK. So I mean, it's an obvious one, but it doesn't have to be so, so obvious. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a hard one now. So I want you to... You've changed a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is, I want you to look very carefully at my surroundings. I want you to look very carefully. Okay. Have a good look. And I'm going to stop my video. Okay. So, can anyone see anything? I mean, this time it's something that's missing. Something that's missing. I've, I've done a really tough one for you. Can anyone see what's missing from the last? Uh, from when I had my camera on before? No, 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 no. 
new t-shirt no i've not changed my clothes or that's an option it was a beastly it was a beastly you know question really i'm going to give you one more go and i'm going to give you a clue it's to do with a song at the start so stopping my video okay turning turning on my video look at the this what was used to sing the song at the start look at it have a look have a look have a look have a look um stopping the video uh starting the video what's changed what's changed Yeah, something about the guitar has changed. I wonder if you know what it was. Oh, nothing. No, it wasn't a trick question. It was. Uh, it was a very. It was a very minor detail. I, I wanted to give you a particular challenge here, and it was the pick. So I removed the pick from the guitar. It was. It was in there. Okay. But of course, um, I mean that's just removing one little one little thing. You can you know you can rearrange. You can you know you can move your you can turn your camera off and, and, and move it, move the cushion. Um, you can, I've got a keyboard down here. Uh, this stuff can be whatever, whatever it, yeah, it was hard to notice, it was a hard one. The, the things that you've got on show can be whatever you want to work with, of course, you know, the, whatever vocabulary you're, you're, you're teaching and, or you've done recently, you wanna recycle something from a few lessons ago, you can have that out as, as a prop as well. Of course, it can be flashcards as well. I mean, we're talking about flashcards in a minute. Uh, here I've been using like actual, yeah, the video's blurred. It's a bit hard to notice small detail. Fair enough, Tiffany. Um, I mean, I'm using real things here, but flashcards are, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about in a second, uh, which are, you know, an, another option. Um, good. Hi, yeah, hide and seek. Okay, just, we'll just do one more. So if I say, right, I'm gonna hide, I'm gonna hide the pen and we're gonna play hide and seek. So let's um, let's stop the video. Okay. Okay. Start the video. So where's it gone? Where is the pen? Where's the pen gone? Now you need to get, tell me in the chat box where it's gone. Or, or suggest where it is. Is it under the doll? Oh, good question. It is not under the doll. Is it behind the pick? The picture? It is not behind the picture. Is it behind the guitar? It is not behind the guitar. Okay. Is it on the sheet of paper? Is it, it's not on the sheet of paper. Okay. Under the guitar? No. Oh, is it under the keyboard? Way, well done, Anna. That was Anna. Anna found the pen. Well done, Anna. So now, now it's your turn, Anna. Um, but Good. So, and again, the objects can be what, you, what you're working with um, to play hide and seek. And the good thing about these games is that the students like playing them. So therefore, they're motivated to learn the language to play them. So to play this game, you need to be able to ask questions. Is it under? Is it behind? Is it, um, you know, and then you need to know the vocabulary of the, the things that it could be hidden under. So you've got all this, this language you need to know to be able to play the game. And that, that's one way of creating motivation to learn language because you know you're going to be using it for something fun. Okay, so you can tell them why they're learning the language. Yeah, um, good. Okay, let's move back to the presentation because I've got 17 minutes left um, and it is important to be, to be on time. Okay, so those, those then were... Um, activities about using your surroundings. I want to just talk about brain breaks for a second. I'm going to stop sharing my screen again. So brain breaks um, are parts in the lesson where your brain gets a break. So imagine that you've got a lesson where you're doing lots of house, sort of heads down work, and you need to a bit of movement, you need a bit of a refresher to get your to get your, um, your concentration back and your energy levels back up and you need just waking up a bit. And I mean, really young learners lessons have lots of activities that already could be considered brain breaks, I think. Um, but what a brain break can also make you think a little bit. And, and an example I'd like to give you is a little song. So I, we, I've been explaining a lot of stuff, but now we're all gonna sing a little song, get a bit of movement in. Now I can't see you, 
uh, but I'm just going to trust that you're going to do this with me. So I want you all singing and dancing in your houses, please, or singing and doing the actions. OK, here we go. Um, one finger, one thumb, keep moving. One finger, one thumb, keep moving. One finger, one thumb, keep moving and we'll all be happy again. One finger, one thumb, one arm, keep moving. One finger, one thumb, one arm, keep moving. One finger, one thumb, one arm, keep moving and we'll all be happy again. One finger, one thumb, one arm, one leg, keep moving. One finger, one thumb, one arm, one leg, keep moving. One finger, one thumb, one arm, one leg, keep moving and we'll all be happy again. One finger, one thumb, one arm, one leg, one nod of the head, keep moving. One finger, one thumb, one arm, one leg, one nod of the head, keep moving. One finger, one thumb, one arm, one leg, one nod of the head, keep moving and we'll all be happy again. Okay, so that's like a common, yeah, great song with TPRs. So I mean, that's a, it's an old song, of course. It's not, I know I didn't come up with that one. It's uh, been around for a long time, but it's a, a young learner's favorite. Um, and it's fun because of the actions and the, the moving from one action to the other. And we're all a little bit like, woof, well, let's have a little rest, a bit of a break. But we have to think too, and it involves language and you're learning, you know. Um, We've had a little break now before we continue with the uh, with the uh, um, presentation with the with the um, with the talk. Okay, okay, fourteen minutes. So I'm going to share my screen, and I'm now going to go to. I mentioned before about sharing your presentation tool, um, sharing your you know your interactive whiteboard software. You might you might call it, and it's something you can do on on in um, you know online lessons. I'm going to use a Pearson course as a model, you know, team up one, team together one, I should say, team up is a uh, local version. So team together one is the, the course I'm going to use. Uh, let me go to the Pearson English portal. So the Pearson English portal is, um, is the place where all of the teachers resources, the uh, presentation tool, the homework activities, the grade book is all held for teachers and students. So it's a single, single sign in to this kind of one-stop shop, if you like. So I'm just gonna sign in as um, my alter ego, Agatha Trunchbull, okay? And I'm going to, okay, I'm going to, well, I'll just mention in passing that you can synchronize your portal account with Zoom. So that means that you can, once your account is synchronized, you can plan your classes and, and set up your classes here and your students would get links to the classes through the portal, to the Zoom classes. Um, of course, we can do this even with a free account, a free Zoom account, but the free Zoom accounts only last for 45 minutes, the lessons. Uh, if you want longer, you have to, um, you know, you have to buy an account. But anyway, you can, lend, you, can, you can set up Zoom with your portal account. Good. I would like to uh, uh, go to my classes and I've set up a class for, for us today, uh, Team Together One, I've called my class. Okay, and I'm going to go to the presentation tool, which is you know, what I wanna talk about at the moment. Okay, so, so we, remember we're talking about toys today, that's what we've been talking about um, over the, that's the vocabulary set we've kind of been mentioning over the course of the session. So I'm gonna go to the first lesson. Now you'll see that you can plan or teach it. Um, imagine we we want to plan it first. We want to check what we're doing. So we're going to click on plan, and we see the lesson aims to ask and answer about toys and use a and an with single countable nouns. Um, the we can see the lesson objectives. So the lessons, all the lessons are written around learning objectives can do descriptors so the students can do something by the end of the lesson and then you've got the target language as well okay um so we've got the different activities which we can uh, sort of maximize to see the teaching notes for um and we can preview activities as well so for example this is a hello song Listen and chant. Shake, shake, shake. 
Okay, so that, I mean, I'm showing you this just because we've been talking about welcome songs. As you might expect. Um, good, but so you can look at the look at the activities. You can preview them. Okay, um, good. I want to go back to, to now. Imagine I've, I've you know I've, I've looked at my lesson. I've looked at the the aims and and look, read, had a look at the notes. Um, I would, you know, I'm ready to teach my lesson. So I click on teach and I can, you know, I can see the page and I've got the page with interactive activities on it from the book. I can, I can click full screen or press F11. Uh, let's have a look. Now oh, there we are, that's better. So that the, the, the page is a little bigger. I can also zoom in and move around the page, okay? So you'll recognize, you'll see some toys here, as, uh, as, you, as, as you can see here. That's just some annotation I did from, from before. Um, so so this, the toys the students are supposed to learn are contextualized in the picture. You'll notice there are questions about colors and, uh, colors and numbers as well. The reason for that is that the, the previous unit was on colors and numbers, so it's sort of space repetition. So, Vocabulary and, and concepts from the previous unit are repeated in the picture for the next unit so that you can quickly mention them again and, and do some space repetition. It's not just, well, we talk about this vocabulary in this unit and then never again, um, things are revisited, okay? Um, so the, the pictures are useful for the game, games like I Spy. Um, I Spy with My Little Eye, a toy beginning with B, uh, you know, that you can look for it in the picture. Um, or you can hide, you can get them to look at the picture, see what you can remember from the picture and, you know, and, and hide it. You can, you can hide the picture like so and say, right, what can you remember? And then we can, you know, they can say, and then we can, you know, we can, we can remove the, the hiding tool. Okay. If we've taught our students how to annotate, we can nominate or ask for volunteers to circle different things. So here I've, had a student circle the balloon. We can do this with the Zoom tool, remember, for annotation. We can get them finding things in the picture and annotating. Um, you know, we can see if our pupils know the names of any of the toys at the start before we sort of teach them. Um, okay, oops, let me just get rid of the teaching tool. Now the second tool, the second activity, I'm just going to click on the second activity here. You can click in to sort of do the, do the interactive activity. Now, this is an activity where. Listen and stick. Look at my toys. It's a car. So the students are listening it's a plane. and sticking in their stickers as, as they go, because they've got stickers in their book. And then the next time they actually say them. Um, now, of course, you could play this through the presentation tool and, and they listen to the, you know, the voice on the tool. But of course, you could do this yourself. You don't, uh, you know, you don't have to use the, the, present, the, the presentation tool for this. Another option, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And if you think about, excuse me, uh, if you think about um, teaching vocabulary, you can do this with, with flashcards, can't you? Uh, and you can do this in... Uh, in online classes, just as you might do on, on home, okay? If you think everyone's probably got their, their favorite flashcard activities, you probably mm, divide them into kind of rep uh, repetition, recognition, and production. So just saying, getting your mouth around them, the sound, uh, then re recognizing which, which picture relates with which word, and then finally saying them yourself. Um, so first of all, you might do listen and repeat. So you might do action figure and you will repeat it. Plane, I can get you to do this individually or, in, or as a class. Car, okay, and I can get my mouth close to the camera. Um, and I can do this, of course, in different voices to try to spice it up a bit. Building blocks, teddy bear. I can get you, uh, you know, saying in a you know, loud or, or a happy voice, puzzle. Or yo-yo, you know, change the, the 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 emotion as well, just to get more mileage out of the listen repeat. Um, and then we can just do recognition. So if you think 
that's just saying the word. The next thing is to check that you know it a bit. So you say stop when the card is the same as what I say. Dull, dull, dull. And you will say stop, or I can get you to wave your hand, stop and say, yes, it's the doll. Or yes, what is it? And you say, it's a doll, you know? Um, true or false is, then, is another recognition thing, isn't it? So it's a doll, true or false. And you can put your thumbs up. So, so Tatiana says true, Ekaterina says false. I can see what, you, uh, what you're saying. Thumbs up or down. But if, you can do other things as well, like uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, true is woohoo and false is uh -uh. So I want you to do woohoo if it's true or uh -uh if it's false. So it's an action figure. So I should hear you and see you going woohoo. You know, it's uh, an action figure. You should go uh -uh. okay. Um, or what? What is what is the next one? You tell me. Did anyone hear the word there? Did anyone spot the word? Start with quite a difficult one there. Well done, Anna. Uh, yeah, well done, Nino. To car next one. Teddy bear, Elena. Well done. Okay, so I can lip read them. It's a teddy bear. Well done, Elena. It is. A, it is indeed a teddy bear. Then imagine you're producing the words slowly appearing on screen. What is it? What is it? What is it? And you say teddy bear. Um, or we can we can get them out the back. We can get them out the back. Teddy bear, yo yo, robot. Well, let's say doll. So we can go. Let's have a look. Uh, doll puzzle, yo yo, robot. Your turn. Doll puzzle, yo yo, robot. Your turn. And let's see if you can do it. Doll puzzle, yo yo, robot. Your turn again. Let's go again. Let's keep going, doll. Puzzle, yo yo, robot. Let's see if you're doing it. And then they're all they're all getting turned away. You're still chanting, doll puzzle, yo yo, robot. What is it? Uh, yes, it's a doll. Um, so you can have them. Uh, you can also do what's missing with these, of course. Just we were talking about. I'm still here. We were talking about. Um, turning the camera off, I can remove one and, you know, um, then turn the camera back on. So there's a lot you can do with uh, flash flashcards as, as well. Okay. Um, oh, three minutes left. Let's just finish quickly. Um, good. So, so like I say, you could present the vocabulary through the tool, but you could also present it through the flashcards and then do the activities on the tool. So the next one is a uh, chant. We'll hear a little bit of it. Listen and chant. What's this? It's a car. What's this? It's a puzzle. A, a plane, plane and, and a dinosaur. dinosaur. Um, so, so you've got a little chant and um you might um they'll need to hear it a few times before they can sing it um you can you can play it in little bits and then they sing the little bit of the song um, and also these chants you can get them to like to write to draw a picture of a of a um, of a toy on their whiteboard and then when it comes up in the chant they hold up their picture because you you can share sound but not video so you can share the sound of the chant only play the song and they can you, they can be doing actions in the song because you can still see their video okay good um finally the, the fourth exercise at the bottom is a speaking activity as you can see um and it's practicing the 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 what is it uh, what's or what's this i should say it's a car it's an action figure and we've practiced that a lot through the lesson the teacher can ask the a student first time but then maybe a student can ask us a student for the next one a student asks a student and and, and nominates okay okay so th that's just an i've just wanted to show you an example of using your um your interactive whiteboard your presentation software in your online lesson and you can go in and out it doesn't need to be sharing the page for the whole lesson as, we, as we've seen you can you know go in and out okay 
So um, that's that's my hour up with a minute to spare. I've been ta I've taken these resources from Team Together. Um, it's a, 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 a Pearson primary course, a six level course. I've just I think only four of them fit on the screen here, but it's a well, seven level, including the starter starter edition, I should say. Um, I hope you've get, got some ideas for your online lessons with young learners. A um, few, you know, a uh, few ideas to take away and perhaps try out in class with them, and a few principles as well to to to, to follow with uh, with your students. Um, good. Okay, so I've got a few people saying thanks uh, for for the ideas and stuff. It's thanks for your for participating in the chat box. Um, uh, it's, it's nice to see you all. Nice to see people from so many different uh, so many different countries. And like I say, I've really appreciated your interaction because that, that I feed off that to give the session. So thank you for participating. Yeah, um, and all the best and enjoy the the rest of the uh, of the series. I know some great talks coming up, so I do I do encourage you to to attend them. Okay, so all the best from me, and uh, hope to see you again soon. Goodbye. <laughs>